Riveting testimony, Dr. Quay. Appreciate the work you've done in sharing that. And now, finally, to bring us to Dr. Richard Muller. Uh, Dr. Muller is a professor emeritus of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. He's worked across his field of study, leading the two efforts that have won Nobel Prizes and the National Science Foundation Alan T. Waterman Award for Outstanding Research. His scientific expertise has been vital to the work that we're doing. Dr. Muller, appreciate you coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Comer, Mr. Scalise. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, it's extremely important. Having just listened to Dr. Quay's comments, I think we need to recognize the power of science. And uh, previous speakers have said that we may never know the origin. What they, I think that is incorrect. I think when we bring the power of science to this, uh, we can reach conclusions that are, uh, that are, that are very powerful. Um, uh, Dr. Quay has covered most of the science that is most relevant. I would like to emphasize five points, each of which is capable of separating and distinguishing between a natural origin, a zoonotic origin, and the uh, lab, uh, lab origin. So let, let me just draw your attention to these five. Uh, the first one is the absence of a pre-pandemic infections. Uh, he mentioned that. And uh, with, with, with not over 9,000 samples taken in Wuhan, no uh, pre-pandemic infections, it's, that's unprecedented. That ha didn't happen with MERS, didn't happen with SARS, doesn't happen with other viruses. Unprecedented. It's very difficult to explain. Papers are being written trying to explain it, but those papers aren't evidence. They're what you do when you're, when you're stuck and the evidence uh, disagrees with you. Um, the absence of a host animal. Uh, if you look at the famous Lancelet article, one of the reasons they say you can dismiss these conspiracy theories of lab origin is because they, they explicitly say China has identified the host animal. They've identified the, uh, the, the location. And they even praise China for its openness. This paper, The Lancet, does not read well when we look at it uh, 16 months later. I recommend everybody reread it and see whether there's any value in that. Uh, the uh, it, unprecedented genetic purity uh, that Dr. Quay talked about. Again, MERS, SARS, previous viruses don't have this, but it is exactly what you would expect if you've gone through gain of function. So each one of these things is 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 compelling uh, by itself. If we had any one of the five things, I've gone. These are three of them. We should conclude that that the evidence strongly uh, favors the lab uh, origin. Um, the, the the spike mutation. The fact that there's no known way for that spike mutation to get there other than by gene insertion in a laboratory is a very powerful argument. And, um, and, and again, there are papers written that try to explain this away, but those papers aren't presenting evidence. The evidence in favor of the natural zoonotic origin, there isn't any. The only evidence that's cited is, well, it looks like another zoonotic uh, case, or those cases are quite common, but there's no scientific evidence uh, supporting those. And, and finally, the fact that uh, this virus was uh, optimized of in, 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 to attack humans. Again, something that has never happened in other, in, 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 in natural releases. Um, but it does happen if you run it through the gain of function. So th th there's really no, all of the scientific evidence uh, argues in favor of the uh, laboratory origin. Um, the, the, the papers against it, the, the famous paper by Christian Anderson in Nature Medicine, uh, his argument against uh, the, uh, the, the, the lab leak case was the fact, his claim, that, the, that the, the, the spike protein had not been optimized, and it certainly would have been. That is his one argument against it in that paper that is so widely quoted. But recent evidence, as Dr. Quay talked about, shows that it was 99.5% optimized. I'm going to end with a little anecdote, uh, a story of, uh, that, that is, is horrifying and more frightening than almost anything else in my life. Uh, in the early days when I was trying to teach myself virology, I called several of my friends uh, who are expert in virology. One of them 
I asked him if he could help me review some of this literature, this anti, the, the, the literature that suggested that there was a lab leak. And he said, no, uh, I'm sorry, Rich, I, I, can't, I can't do that. Well, okay, is there someone in your lab who could do it? No, nobody in my lab will do it. Uh, well, why not? Well, let me be candid. If anybody in my laboratory is discovered to be working on a laboratory leak hypothesis, China will label us enemies of China, and the laboratory will be blacklisted, and we will no longer be able to collaborate. We collaborate all the time with China. Uh, nobody will, will, will take that risk. This, 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 chilling, this is one of the most chilling conversations I've had in my life. Uh, the idea that China has managed to, 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 to interfere, to break um, the United States' freedom of expression, freedom of investigation, freedom of thought, uh, by, by, <laughs> through this collaboration effort, really scary. So in, in, let, let me just, just say that um, uh, some people say we will never know, not until China confesses, uh, or unless there's a whistleblower. Well, we have a whistleblower. It was the virus itself. It came here, it came out of China, it came to us, and it carried with us genetic information. With, and and there, there are, in my mind, five compelling sets of scientific uh, evidence that allow us to reach this very strong conclusion that yes, it was a laboratory leak. Thank you very much. Well, thank you.